I'm ready. You know, when I'm in the hospital, I'm like tired. Right. Now you got the energy. What? This is like the real Dave. You know what I mean? It's yes, like, man. I'm pumped. Yeah. All I'm right. Pumped too. So I'll do the little intro thing. I'll introduce you and then we're in. You ready? Okay. Hell yeah. What's going on, everybody? You're tuned into another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Lizzie the Gifted, where we do a brand new episode every day, documenting my journey as an independent musician. Super, super exciting interview right now. This is our second attempt, but we've been trying to get the times right with the Calendly link. Um, but we got a really special guest who I think the story that you're going to hear today is really going to inspire you guys. We got my man, Young Dave Bangin. Uh, Dave, what's up, bro? Finally made this happen. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much, man. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy, man. I'm super happy. Yeah. How is it over there in, Oak, in uh, the Bay Area? Man, it's cool, man. It's, it's uh, let's see. Right now, so the sun's poking its head out, man. It was raining. Uh, we in California. Look at me. I'm bundled up, and it's California cold. That means that it's not that cold to everybody else. Like for you, this would be shorts weather. For me, it's like gloves, beanie, two jackets, all like long johns on under the sweats. Now, <laughs> <laughs> so you already know there's a lot of snow, man. Freezing. Where are you at? Tell people where you're at. So I'm from a city called Hamilton. It's in Ontario. To you guys, to the people that don't know, it's about I will say. 45 minutes away from Toronto, right? Uh -huh. um, I think it's, yeah, from, it's west to Toronto, yeah. 45, 40 to 45 minutes west from Toronto. Uh, small city, but it's, a, it, it's big, but I'll just say it's a little small city compared to major cities. There are about over half a million people, but I love it, man. That's my home. Hamilton, that's awesome. That's right. Hamilton, yeah. Hamilton, Can Hamilton, Ontario. So, the way mm -hmm. that me and Dave got linked was I was on TikTok. I was scrolling uh, and I saw a video of you <laughs> in the hospital and you were like, yo, like I'm going to make a beat um, while I'm in the hospital. I've got sickle cell, which mm -hmm. we're going to learn about today. And yeah. uh, you were making a beat and you literally used the sounds in your hospital room, the beeping of these different machines and you had your uh -huh. keyboard, you threw down a fire ass beat drums you played your own melodies and uh i actually saved the video to my camera roll and posted it on my instagram and tagged you and that actually that video got over a thousand views i mean it did pretty good like people liked it um and i was like dude i gotta get this guy on my pod because <clears throat> i'm always preaching no excuse life i'm always preaching get it done however and you have this disease that's pretty crazy disease and like you still were like not only were you making beats but you're putting out content so yeah. Can you, let's, I want to talk about sickle cell and then I want to know about your dedication, but let, like, what is the sick, is it called sickle cell virus or what is it called and what is it? Oh, sickle cell anemia disease. So basically it's a, it's a disease. I'll explain it. Right. So you see how uh, your red blood cells are, are circular, right. And it mm -hmm. carries oxygens and everything that it needs in it. Right. So my bl red blood cells, instead of it being circled, it's sickle which means it's a, it's a shape of like a moon okay. or a banana, right? Which means that when it's like that, it's basically dead cells with basically nothing in it, you know? Nothing you know in it, okay. Yeah, so it's missing oxygen. It's missing so much, uh, I can say, like matter that's in the cell, you know what I mean? And usually like your cells flows nicely in through like through your bloodstreams right through your veins and all of that throughout your whole bodies but since my cells are basically sickle it interlocks with each other and oh. it causes like a traffic jam and then wherever that area happens wherever the traffic jam happens that's which is basically like a blood clot that's when i have pain wherever so if it's clotting in my chest i'll have chest pain if it's clotting in my leg i'll have leg pain to the point that i need to get rushed to the hospital immediately immediately i need to go to the hospital and then they have to give me like very very strong painkillers such as hydromorphone morphine and fentanyl and stuff just to calm the pain down and sometimes like i could see me when i 
get into what we call a crisis, a pain crisis, I average about 30 days in the hospital, mm. like easily. So I would get admitted <clears throat> and they would pump me up with meds and just give me as, as much fluid as possible. And then I would not even be in a regular unit, I mean unit, I would be in critical care unit, right? Because of the medications that they gave me and how severe it is, right? So it is a very, very tough disease because the toughest thing about it is actually the suffering. Mm. You know, so if you do research on sickle cell, they say what it's one of the worst disease because it's not one of those diseases that it just basically kills you type thing. You do have a short life ex uh, like expectancy, but the worst part about it is the suffering, the pain that comes with it. You know what I mean? It is mm. so terrible. There is no pain in the world like it that's how bad it is so everyone was sick as hell i take my hat off to you guys i read you guys and you guys are warriors man you know how often did these happen i'm gonna be real with you with me personally it happens i'd say almost every month fuck yeah wow so like I think it was what last year. I did 250 days in the hospital. Out of last three year. Months. Yeah, I think it was there. Yeah. Wow. 250 days admitted in the hospital. So that's how, what. That's, yeah, go ahead. How long have you been experiencing this? Like, how long has this been a reality in your life? Ever since I can remember, man. You're born like, with it. Born with it's it. A, it's, yep, you're born with it. It's a genetic wow. disease right, that you inherit from your parents and stuff. Yeah. Is, it, is there a cure for this? No, there's no cure right no. now. But there is a cure, but it's kind of like kidney disease. So basically what you need to do is uh, there's two ways. There's a, you can have a bone marrow transplant, but you need to have a match. You know, like your parents or your siblings have to be a full match for you to, ha to, to go through a, a bone marrow trans transplant. And then there's a new one that just got approved two years ago. It's called the gene therapy, you know? But it's so, so new that they think, okay, not they think, they says it worked, but there's not enough evidence of what's gonna happen in the future. And there's so many things, you know what I mean? That, that comes with it and loopholes and remind you every, every single time you you hop into one of those process right you got to always remember that there's also a chance of failure and mm. there's also a chance of death mm. because what you're doing is very risky the first one which is a transplant basically you need your parents to be a match they take out your bone they take out their bone marrow whatever and then they basically wipe your bone marrow and put your match if it's your mother or your father, they, they transplant, which is like a blood transfusion through your bone marrow, and hopefully your body accepts it. And then, yeah, that's how you can be sick or self free. Mm. But unfortunately, a lot of people do not have matches, such as me. My okay. parents are not a match, my brother and sister are not a match. So, unfortunately, yeah. And um, actually, they just called me recently for gene therapy. I was kind of, I was down to do it, but then. There's so much things that comes behind it, right? So I was like, ooh, it's a, it's a, it's a big, it's a big decision. You know what I mean? So yeah. For now, I said, you know what? I'm gonna step down just because I weighed up my pros and cons. Because even though sickle cell is so bad and it's so devastating and it, it causes you trauma it gives your family trauma and you get ptsd all that type of stuff because it's so severe i learned how to live with it you understand what i mean because i'm mm. 23 years old right now right so that's basically 23 years of it became like a, a norm to me you know it's it, it's a, it's normal to me going through this even though it's horrible but it's just the reality right so when i look at the odds or when I look at the other side, it, it's very scary. I would have to be in the hospital for a year, first of all. So, but I, I want to do it because I'm like, I'd rather take that chance, right, of doing it for a year 
and then I'm sick of self free, right? But you gotta remember, I'm gonna have to go through chemo and all that type of thing. Mm. You know, so right. we already know we already know how rough that is alone. We know what's it called? Yeah, you're, I'm gonna have to go through chemo. I'm gonna be in a bubble, so I'm not gonna have to. I cannot have interaction with anyone. You know, not with my family, friends, loved one, none of it. None of them. I'm going to be in my own bubble because they're going to strip down my whole body. You know, so I'm basically going to be like, they're, re- they're going to re- basically do my DNA. So I'm going to be in a hospital. I'm going to be very, very sick. And I cannot get sick. I cannot get sick because if I get sick, I could be, I could die right there, right? Because I have nothing. I have nothing, so I have to be 100% healthy. But do the math, I get sick every month. That whole process is a year. Hmm. I've, I don't think I've ever had a year of not being sick. I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever had that window, right? So it's tough. Imagine me going through that process, getting sick. Okay, that's another complication. My body can reject it because I have a lot of anybody, like, yeah, antibodies and stuff, right? And even me, when I get blood transfusion, I have to wait like four or five hours, you know, because to to find even just my match, because I'm even though I'm O positive, but I have so much antibodies that it takes so much time that sometimes I have to wait. I have to, I live in Hamilton, Toronto, right? Sometimes my blood comes from all the way in Vancouver in a helicopter. So that's three hours already. And I'm just there waiting, 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 right? And then what if it does go left? Like, what if it does go wrong? Then I can lose my life. Mm. And also, if I do it, I'm going to lose my ability to have kids. You know what I mean? Mm. And that's a big thing to me. I'm very family orientated, right? So I'm like, uh, I want to have kids. So in a way, as much as I would love to do it, I'm like, I'm not ready yet. I might change my mind in the future, you know? We'll mm-hmm. see how that goes. But for now, I said, you know what? I'm going to just live with it. I'm going to keep praying to God, you know, and move forward. Wow. But, you know, I'm not stressing when it comes to that. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not stressing. I'm not worrying. I'm just living day by day, grinding, you know? That's fucking amazing, bro. <laughs> like, your attitude is so fucking inspiring, bro. Like, I can't. It's so, bro, yeah, like, it's so, um, I appreciate you being on, I'm so overwhelmed. I appreciate you being on the pod first off. And I think that anybody listening to this can agree with me that they appreciate you sharing your story because I appreciate you're it. giving me and everyone listening a sense of perspective that we don't get, you know, like, um, you know, like, I just feel like I want to know so there's something else a part of your DNA. It's a positive attitude because yeah. how are you able to go through this terrible thing? But then you just go, you know what, bro, I'm not stressing. I'm just going to keep doing my thing, making music. How? Okay, That's man. what I want to know. How are you able to have that powerful sense of positivity and just keep going? Okay. I got you. So I'm going to explain you everything, right? So Ever since I was born, I was like this, but that sickle cell stuff, right? It weighed so heavy on me. It weighed so heavy. I was always looked down upon. I was always spat at. You know, I was getting made fun of as a kid. So I I fought a lot. Like when I was young, I fought a lot. You know, because they trying to bully me. I'm like, I ain't getting bullied. So if we gonna fight, we gonna fight. And I'm gonna get my respect. So I was always trying to prove him. I was always trying to prove myself. I was always trying to get accepted, you know, because my whole life I was always trying to be normal. I was, because imagine being in my shoes, right? Everyone can play basketball. They won't let me play basketball like that because, oh, I'm scared for you to get sick. Everyone goes swimming. I know you can't go swimming because if you go into the pool, you're gonna get sick. So, my whole life, there's been so much barriers in front of me, right? And I let it get to me. You know, I let it get to me. So I had dark, dark, dark moments. 
I had moments when I was so down, I was crying. Just, you know, just going through the worst, going through the worst, hopeless. And you got to remember, right, ever since I was born, literally, I was not supposed to make it past five years old. Mm. I was in a coma. They told me I had 24 hours and then they're going to, my mother unplugged me. They unplugged me, signed the papers, unplugged me. And by God's grace, I just came back. After they unplugged me, I came back. I just had to, they signed my death certificate, all of that, time of death and everything. And I just randomly had a seizure and God brought me back. After that, you know what? You're going to be, his brain activity stopped. Like he was gone. So there's no way that he's going to be normal again. He is going to have some mental disabilities and stuff, right? So when they told my mom that, it was like she was happy because I'm alive. But she's like, my little David's not going to be the same at all. You know, so then after that, just... I started getting better and stuff. And then they told me I wasn't supposed to make it to 12. And then they told me I wasn't supposed to make it to 16. Then they told me I wasn't going to make it to 18. Then 21. Now I'm 23. You know, so imagine living with that weight. Your Mm -hmm. doctor all the time, yeah, we don't think you're going to be alive by this time. By this time, because this happened. Oh, you got overdosed on, like, uh, more uh, morphine and stuff. So uh, we don't know if your brain's gonna go boom. And then they, I got, I got clinic. And mind you, all these overdoses are clinically. It was not by myself. I wasn't home popping pills and taking drugs. And I over, no, I was in the ER. You know. And then I'm having my pain. And then they gave me meds. And then I guess uh, they just overdosed me. I guess you know what I mean. So I was going through all of that. You know. So I had so much till right now I have so much pain in me you know what I mean but then I realized that I'm in control (laughs) oh my god that's what I realized and when I say I'm in control I'm not saying like my faith and stuff because the reason why I'm here is God man my Lord Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior thank you it's him alone that did that not me but how I feel how I act how I react, that's my control. And when I realized the power God actually gave us to be able to control our emotion, control our thoughts, control our spirituality, control the type of person we want to be, there's a lot of power in that. So I felt the darkness, the sadness, depression. I felt all of that. And I went through that and I hated it. There's not one person that's depressed that loves it. I never met that one person in my life. Every single person going through that hates it. But then I started laughing. When I laughed, I loved it. So I'm like, you know what? Why would I put my mind on the negative stuff and I hate it when I love laughing? So I just started brainwashing myself. I started hacking my brain. Right. And starting saying, you know, I'm going to just start doing what I like. What do I like? Family. Okay. Let me call my family. Let's crack some jokes. Crack some jokes. Let's play video games. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. And all the negative thoughts in your head are not your thoughts. That's another thing I learned. Because from zero to three years old, you're operating at your genius level, right? Okay. Everyone's encouraging you. Let's mm. say a baby, right? A baby. I have my goddaughter right now. She's about to turn one in like three days. I remember seeing her take her first steps. We were so happy, right? We were clapping. Woo! Come on, take. Everyone's just giving you that energy, right? So wow. the baby can walk. Everyone's just, you know what I'm talking about? Because I'm totally. Going to- You know what I mean? We're giving that energy to that kid. But why is it that when we start turning older, the 14, 15, now we start spitting on people right away? That's, keep going. This is is dope. You understand what I'm saying? 
So if there's a little kid that's like 15, 16, it's like I'm starting my own business. We're gonna, we're gonna say, no, don't do that. Just, you know. Get just, a real job. Yeah. Why don't we take the same energy we had as a kid and push them mm. so they can actually become some, someone? Mm. We don't do that. No. You we know? don't do it to ourselves either. Like we don't encourage ah. ourselves either. Like we go through that war every day of the self-doubt ah, nice. and the limiting beliefs. And it really, mm. it really starts there. Yeah. A hundred percent, you know? So then back to what I was just saying, like, I realize the power that we actually have. Right. And we become positive. It's a hack. It's a hack that actually betters ourselves because it all starts here. You know, it all starts here. Right. Because, oh yeah, that's my bad. What, what was I saying before? I was saying, yeah, yeah, uh, your thoughts. Yeah, negative thoughts are not yours. Mm -hmm. Other people's voices that are in your head. Because if you t eliminate all the people, you say you want to go to the example. I want to go to the NBA. I go outside and I hoop. But then what happened? There was that one guy watching me saying, nope, you're not good enough. You're too small. Then I start saying, damn, I'm not going to make it. I'm too small. But originally, I had my ambition. I had my work ethic. I went outside to train. But that one person said, nope, ah, you're not no Kobe, you're not no Michael, you're not no LeBron, you can't do this. And we let that affect us. Then we put our head down and we stop. But we also have the, that's what I was telling. That's what I was saying. We also have the power to take that thought, push it to the side, and say, you know what, we'll see. I'm going to keep going. We'll see. Right. And then you keep training. Right power in your mind so you're in control so i could decide and be like yo you know what since i'm doing this music stuff everyone says i'm not i'm not going to be no metro boom and i'm not no dr dre you know what i'm just gonna hang it up and just give up right i have it's my power to do that when they say the only person that can stop you and is you that is a fact that's so true that is a, a big fact, you know? So when you actually come to the realization of, wait a minute, that person can say this, but I don't care about it. I'm gonna make it, we'll see. Let me just keep going. Now you're working towards it. You're going, going, going. And every time you're gonna see, you're taking a step, a step, a step, a step, a step. And then rather they want it or not, you will make it. You will. And those same people that are going to say, ah, his music is trash, I hate his beats, are going to be the same person that are going to say, oh my gosh, I know that guy. What? Me and him, we were in the same school. Yeah, bro, he was my classmate. What? Yeah, bro, that's my guy. Mm. Power. So let me ask you this. I'm curious about what you think about this. Yeah. Because I'm like pretty much not, first of all, thank you for sharing everything no i'm yeah. pretty much naturally an extrovert so like i love being around people and i know when i was younger i was always trying to be around people because i had so much fun hanging out with people yeah. and i put a little bit too much dependency on that on like needing to hang out with human yeah. with other people <clears throat> and now uh there's a danger in it mm -hmm. what do you uh what's your take on just that balance between needing time to yourself, but also being around people. I'm going to tell you this. I'm just like you. Okay. I'm an extrovert. I'm not an introvert. You know, my brother is an introvert, but mm. I'm an extrovert. That's just how God made me. Right. So I do need to be around my people around my family. Right. But what I would tell you is find like-minded people. Oh, yes. You know? Yeah. Because I can tell you what you're going to be if you show me who your friends are. That's a fact. And it's not 100% true, but it's 80% true because of influence. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to influence you one way or another. Rather than you want it or not, it's going to happen. 
That's why if you chill with b ballers, let's say basketball, you're going to talk like them. You're going to say, yo, let's go hoop. Okay, yo, 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 you know what, bro, what? Bro, I'm going to go, I'm going to do it. Like, you're just going to speak that lingo because you're always with them, right? And it's just natural. Right. You know, it, it's just a natural thing that happens, you know? So if you surround yourself, because you know you're extrovert, right? Yeah. That energy stuff is actually real. Mm-hmm. No, because if you chill, imagine if you chill with negative people all the time. Mm. You make your music, right? You now you it's time for you to chill with your friends, right? Because you're an extrovert. You come to my circle and we're all negative. You play your music, we're like, man, get this guy out of here, man. This guy's so shit. Like, bro, move that. Like, it's gonna start getting to you one way or yeah. another. It is going to affect you. Right. You know? And then it takes a lot to admit it because a lot of people say oh no me nothing affects me no i feel like uh they're lying because of human beings that's why we have feelings right it's for those type of reasons right you know what i mean so what my advice to you would be find like-minded people that are going to motivate you that's going to push you so let's say they don't like your music you play it they can say like okay you know what if this song is not that hard but if you switch your ad lib, you pick a harder beat, or if you switch up your flow, it'll go. People, you, you, because I do have those friends that come to the studio with, like, they come to the studio with me, you know? You could call it entourage or whatever you want to call it, but me, I like all my friends to be productive, so I want all my friends to be something, not just sit there and watch me, you know, because right. I want them to also <laughs> go forward in life so we can all win, right? So now just put them like mine and as you like you can set those boundaries with your friends you know you can say okay i want to chill with you guys but yo guys i'm not doing none of that negative stuff if you want to be negative bro, hit the door because that's not the time i'm trying to work right now i'm trying to grind i want to be with you guys but i don't want to feel like i'm like i'm being spat at or stepped upon as if you're better than me because i'm not better than you we're all one we're all equal just because you're richer than me or just because you have a good family, or it doesn't mean you're better than me because I have sickle cell. And just because I have sickle cell, it doesn't mean that I'm better because someone has diabetes. No. Right. We are all the same. Right. You know what I mean? And we do have the power to influence each other, but let's make sure we influence each other in a positive way. Right. You know, so if you're extrovert, talk to your friends, especially if, like, it's your best friends, even if they're super negative. Have a one-on-one -on -one talk to them. And you got to right. also remember, a lot of them are, are negative because, honestly, they're, they're, they're depressed. That's all they know. So subconsciously, it's not even their fault. It's just they're hurt. Hurt people hurt people, man. That's real. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. yeah. So that's why every time, let's say, I see I do something and I see someone hating, I empathize with them because I'm like, damn, they're going through it right now. I'm not the problem. I just came and did my thing. I'm happy. I'm my family. I'm laughing. He's like, what? Why is this guy over here trying to give back? Like, mm. who does this guy think he is? He thinks he's Jay Z or something. Like, what? <laughs> and that happened a lot of right. times. Right. I, I can even show you videos of how in my because I live in a low income area, right? Section eight, and I gave back to my whole community. Me and my, uh, me and my team and stuff. We gave back to every single door in my low income community that I'm still in. You know, we gave back, and when we were when we came 24 hours before to hang up the flyers and knock on the doors and give it to them, saying like, "Okay, guys, so tomorrow at 12 o'clock, we're gonna be giving out free food, free toys, and free like utilities like toilet papers." Um, what's it called free food and stuff like that you know those same people that i was trying to help spat at me they took the flyers they threw it at me i was like okay no problem walked away went to the next door some of them are like what what do you want like yo it's covid like leave me alone even though i had my mask the face shield everything because i was just trying to help my community hmm. you know but then i i, I re at first i got mad but i realized like we're all in low income community. That means everyone's going through it. COVID just hit. They're not getting their money like they're supposed to. You know, it's some of them have diseases. They can't get out of the house, which means they're not able to get their groceries, which means they're hungry. When you're hungry, you can't think, right? So how are you going to be nice to someone when you're hungry and you didn't eat all day? 
someone knocks on your door and then you have to get up, open it, and then you see they're trying to give you a flyer. Get out of here. Leave me alone. So it makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then the funny part is this. The next day, 12 p.m. came. We brought those. You guys have U-Haul trucks, right? Yeah. U-Haul trucks, lifted it up. So much food. So much toilet. Everything. Uh, baby diapers. And then we're like, okay, guys. The things are come outside. They're like, oh, okay, we'll see. One by one, they started coming out. And they seen it was real. They're like, wait, what? They're giving away what? Free food? Oh, my gosh. Those same people that took the flyers, threw it at me, was doing all that type of stuff to me and my team, same people came back and apologized. I said, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. No one has ever done this in the history of this neighborhood in the city. No one has ever done this. Thank you. This is much needed. Like, we appreciate you. And now we're friends. We have tight bonds, me and my whole community. How did you make all that happen? Like, did you get someone to donate? Did you go, like, how did you make all that happen? So the good thing about Canada is that we have grants. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's the good thing about Canada, we have grants. And at first, I'm going to tell you my plan. At first, my plan was, okay, I'm going to make this music. I'm going to pop. Then when I turn to a millionaire, I'm going to give back. But I was wrong. You don't need a lot to give back. Mm. You just need what you have. Mm. You know? So I went downtown. And I know in the States, you guys have a lot of non-for-profit, right? Yeah. I also own a non-for-profit called Never Gonna Stop Community for the Arts. You know? I own it, me and my friend Siphon and, and uh, my, our other partner, Alex. We went to a non-for-profit called HCCI and BGNO. We went up to them and we told them what's going on in our communities and COVID time. And we asked them for help because they get a lot of donations, a lot of food, you know, because you know how it is over here, Canada and America. There's a lot of donations and, and uh, there's a lot of non-for-profit you could go to and partnership with, you know, to do good deeds. So we actually did so. and built a project and uh, took down how many doors there were and how much food you wanted to give out to each doors and all that type of stuff. And we planned it. It took us about, I think it took about a month of planning. Mm-hmm. And then that day we just delivered, you know, but what I want to, what I want you guys to just know is like, it doesn't take a lot to get back. You do not mm-hmm. need a million dollars. You don't need a hundred K. You don't even need a thousand dollars to give back. Mm-hmm. It just takes willingness and knocking on doors. <laughs> That's it. Mm-hmm. If you knock, you'll find it. You will find it. And what's, the, what's that feeling like? I mean, how do you feel when you get back? Priceless. Priceless. Best feeling in the world. Priceless. Priceless. Right. Because it's real change. You can feel the change. And that was another thing we we're going through, right? Because we're like, yeah, we want to give back. But we're like, we don't want to give it. No disrespect, but we didn't want to give it to a food bank and then go home. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to have that one-on-one interaction. Mm-hmm. You know, because there's something about that energy shift, right? About giving back. That's just different because I come from it. That's why it hits home to me. You know, so we did. So, and then when we actually, I'm going to, because I'm also working on my EP and my documentary. Um, the name of it, we already chose the name and everything. I'm going to announce it. It's going to be exclusive over here. Um, it's going to be called the Book of David. Oh, so, exclusive announcement. Okay. That's an exclusive. I dropped it right now here, you know. That's sick. Called, yeah, the Book of David. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys because we documented the, we documented everything, right? Shouts out Gary V. It's because of him that I'm documenting everything, you know. So I documented everything and I'm going to show you how we gave back and everything, right? Yeah. Oh, I had a brain for it. What was I talking about? Again? No, no, that's great. We're talking. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> you were talking about uh, the idea of giving back, and you were talking about how you have your documentary and your EP that you're doing. So you're yeah. rapping on your EP? No, I'm not rapping. I'm so you're producing it though. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm producing it, and then I'm getting like uh, my colleagues to rap on it. I'm giving them subjects to rap on it, and I'm producing the whole tape and stuff. Is it done? Like, how much more do you have to go for that? I would say it's like probably sixty five percent. If you have open slots, man, I would love to rap on it. If you if okay. you have any extra songs or if it's already put to the books, I don't no yeah. problem. I'm just so we're gonna chop it up. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna chop it up for sure. Yeah, I would love to I would love to be featured on it if you got for space. Sure. If not, no worries. Just want to throw it out there. Uh uh-uh, uh no no no, don't worry. We're gonna get that popping. Uh huh. I awesome. got you. Don't worry. I got nice. you. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm not a rapper, I'm a producer, right? Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put your slide in for sure. Yeah. And so I'm working on a documentary, and I'm gonna everything that I'm talking about in this uh, in this episode, you're actually gonna be able to see it visually, and I'm, we're gonna go also in depth more of all, everything that happened. You know, with my whole life, how I've been into music, and everything I've been through, and all that type of stuff. So it's gonna be an EP, a documentary that's gonna come with it, and then you guys are gonna have it. We're gonna enjoy. Wow. It. Mm-hmm. oh shit so the ep is also called the book of david yeah wow so this is dope that you're talking about this because i'm putting something together similar where there's like a music aspect and a visual aspect mm-hmm. and i love that you're packaging that all together yep. um i think that's really i think that's great man there's so many uh yeah i mean from for me personally i'm getting so much inspiration from this but i think people listening to this are also getting a lot of inspiration uh from you from you and um uh, yeah dude i'm like speechless and i so when it comes to like people who inspire you like you just mentioned gary v are there other people are there artists are there influencers that you're into like who else a hundred percent man so artists who actually inspire me personally like, I'm a big Nipsey fan. Mm. Huge Nipsey fan. You know, I'm a huge Jay Z fan. Jay Z is my favorite rapper, and I love how he's business savvy and how he gives back. Jay Z really inspires him. One day, I gotta meet him and just say thank you and get that bucket list. I have a beat for him too. You know, one day when I see him, I have to play him the beat, and I know he's gonna. I know he's gonna love it. I know. It's just my intuition to him. Yeah, I know he's going to rock with it. Yeah. It's not going to be a regular trap beat. I have some soul stuff for him with those samples like Just Blazing them, you know? So, yeah, so he inspires me also. I'm a big Lil Wayne fan. I'm a mm. Weezy fan. That's what I grew up on when I was a young favorite rapper. I love the way he's just dedicated to the art every day in the studio, in the studio. Nothing else eh, except for skating and his family in the studio. So, you know? He's a huge inspiration, and nowadays I would say like, I I I rock with Metro Boomin a lot, you know, and I'm I'm like following his footstep and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Because he made it to a point where I would like to be one day, right? Even the way like he does his branding and all of that, like I rock with Metro. One day I would like to lock lock in with him too, you know, and work on something for sure. Even oh, Durkio man, Durkio right now. He's number one on my list right now. Like, little Dirk, man, shouts out the voice. That was hard, man. The voice was hard. Like, yeah. When I get up, I got to get Dirk EO too, man. That's- I love Lil Dirk. Yeah, like, even recently, I vibe with every single person you just named. <laughs> Lil yeah. Dirk, yeah, recently, Lil Dirk, even before that that song with Drake dropped, mm-hmm. I was listening to his album, uh, what album was I listening to? But I was listening to a couple of his things, and I was like, "Signed to the streets, really? huh? Signed to the streets, yeah." And yeah. and and love for the street, yeah. Love yeah, yeah. Both of those, I was like, "Bro, this dude, dirt." I mean, I've been knowing him, but I never had paid that much attention. I and was uh, also, yo, but I like the new Dirk Yo now, you know. I, oh, the I, voice, I, bro. I, I didn't even. Wow. Okay. That's what I said. The shout out. The the voice goes hard. Yeah, I was thinking. I was like, is that? Did he drop that? Oh shit. Red man. Oh, just Red a couple man. days ago. Huh. I'm hyped now. Read that was easy. What? That's crazy, man. I almost dropped a tear, man, cause so much real things was going on, bro. Like I got death and easy. Death and easy. You gotta run that, like. It's going to get you in your feeling, especially if you lost a lot of people like me, man. Like, I'm telling you, man, I had three back-to-back funerals last month. 
Really? Yeah. I lost my uncle. I lost my grandma. And I lost my other uncle. Damn, man. I'm and sorry like, to hear that. Every, every, basically every week, boom, boom, boom. You know, in a month. Last, yeah, last month. Boom, boom, boom. So funeral, funeral, funeral. So my uncle passed away. I was in a hospital. And after he died, it got to me so much, I actually got sicker. And then I got out the hospital, took a flight, went straight to Montreal. Did was there at the funeral right away because I had to as my uncle he raised me all of that right after the funeral ends we get home I get a phone call right my other uncle dad that was in that uh, lived in my city of Hamilton right and I did a whole lot of sleepovers at his at his crib with my my cousins and all of them you know it was just so sad I can't believe I got that phone call right after that that funeral, you know, right after that, you know? And then when I got back, I was going to go to the funeral. I got sick, so I was in a hospital. So I couldn't even go to the funeral, so that got to me even more. And then I got out of the hospital. And then, yeah, no, no, I was still in the hospital. And then I was talking to my cousin. And as I was talking to my cousin, my grandma was really, really sick. And I was on FaceTime with her, all of that. And then she went to, I was actually in the hospital, right? Because that was the same time when my uncle passed, and then I was on FaceTime with my, with my cousin, and he was like, Grandma ain't good, you know, Grandma ain't good at all. Like, she's going through it, you know. And then once she was about, she went to the hospital, and then that night she passed away. Mm. So, back to back to back. So, when I listen to Dirk, you like, death ain't easy. Like, who told me death was easy? And he goes, like, Why you leave me? Why you tell me? Why you tell me that death ain't easy? That hits home, you know, that hits home. And wow. the way he's yelling, it just resonates with my spirit, with my everything. It gave me chills, you know. And the rest of peace, Vaughn, bro. So I, I feel him right now, you know. It's tough, yeah. man. And I know how it feels like because I lost my brother in the sickle cell when I was 17. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. So your brother had sickle cell too? Uh huh. Passed away. Wow. Yeah. That's gonna be in my documentaries too. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna talk up on that subject. Hard life, man. Hard. And, and dude, just I'm so sorry to hear about all of those losses. Like, okay. like um. And I really do you believe? I think I've heard. I don't know if this is true or if I've heard, where I heard this, but they say that God gives His toughest battles to His strongest soldiers. Is that Something you've ever heard before? I hear that every day. Is that, I mean. Every time I go to the, to the ER, my phone, your know, day, you already know, man. If you can, that's because you can handle it. I say, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, but then on the other side, I'm like, God, I don't want to be the strongest soldier. Because right. it comes with too much pain. I wish I could just have that easy life. All my family and friends is there and. I'm easy. I, I don't want to have that tough life. Y'all can have that. You guys can have that because being a tough guy, just like 50 said, you have to go through tough things to be a tough guy. That's what being tough is. You know? But at the end of the day, also, I'll never understand why I lost my people. Mm -hmm. And I'm still hurting when it comes to that. And I don't think that'll ever go away. But it did help me, though. Because I value life way more. I appreciate the small things way more. Especially the fact that I'm in the hospital all the time. I appreciate all the little things. That's why I was so grateful when you reached out to me. Because to me, it actually means a lot. Mm. No, I'm just here. A young guy from the trenches just doing my thing. And I'm getting a phone call from you all the way to in the Bay Area. Hollering at me for an interview. That's huge to me. Mm. I never you know? thought of that. So maybe, so maybe if I didn't have this type of life, I think like, oh, it's just a, another guy trying to holler at me and whatever. But no, because I've been through so much. And that's even before I, I used to never even speak about sickle cell until my brother died. It took my brother to die for me to talk about it and stuff, you know, because I thought I was, I thought that we were the only one going through this. I mm -hmm. promise you, man. 
I thought I was the only person in the world going through this. That's really how I felt when I was younger. But then when I started speaking out and then I started seeing, get, I'm getting like 20 DMs from other sicklers in the world tell me like, man, I got sick of stuff too, man. You motivate me, woo, 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 all that type of stuff. It just boosted me and it just got me like, man, I'm gonna talk more about it because we need it. And there's, we go through so much pain, man, even in the health system, man. They think we junkies. I promise you. I, I, I had that before. My brother, my little brother, right? He had sickle cell, but he like my cousin. He had sickle cell. Um, he had a crisis. Yeah, he, so he had a crisis. And then I didn't know. And then I went on Snap. And I seen he was having a crisis. So I'm like, yo, you have to eat. All right, that was pre-COVID, right? And then he's like, yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to come to you right now. I took my Uber, went right, right there right away. And I show up. And he's on a chair, not even on a, he's on a chair, crying, yelling. And I'm like, what the heck? Where are his meds? Why is he not hooked up to his IV? Why is he not getting medicine? Like it is documented, it is in his file when you pull up his name that he has sickle cell disease and he gets admitted, these are the medication. But the, the doctor refused to give it to him his medicines and he's going through pain he's sweating he's crying and they're like no 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 um what we're gonna do we're gonna give you tylenol and yeah we're gonna uh we're gonna see um if that helps you even though it's not it's tylenol mind you we get hydromorphone fentanyl that type of you're giving them tylenol and he's going through a sickle cell pain crisis and this is happening because he's black that's just the reality of it you know, and they're like, oh, no, uh, we don't want to give him um, these meds because, uh, you know, we don't want him to get addicted and stuff. I'm like, what? See, and that's another thing that's really, really good about being in the community and, like, speaking out to this is that they don't know who I am. So they look at me. I got my hat back. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I have my hoodie on, even though this is, um, this is our brand, NGS, Marek mm-hmm. Jamais. This is our non for profit that I'm wearing right now. Even on the sleeve, it says um, Young Dave Banging, which is my name. And then it says Sickle Cell Disease, you know, mm. just so we're fighting against it. That's why my favorite color is red, right? Because it represents Sickle Cell. But um, and yeah, you know, so I was there. They don't know who I am. They don't know the connections that I have. They don't know that I'm, I'm plugged in with the mayor, the, the, how you call it, the Hamilton MP of the city. They don't know that, like, I'm connected with, like, the top doctor in the city. They don't know that. So they just look at me. They think I'm just a, another young, probably, they're looking at me like, ah, black guy, he's, he's ignorant. Like, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. They don't even know. I have sickness on myself. So I went back and forth with those doctors. They still refused to give him his medicine. So what I had to do, I pulled out my phone, and I called my doctor right away. And I was yelling, but I wasn't yelling at her. I was just letting her know her situation because I was so frustrated. It literally brought tears to my eyes that they're looking at him suffering. And they're letting him be as if it was nothing. As if, uh, and he's suffering and he's crying. Tears are coming down of his, and he's a grown man. And at the time, he's like, what, 19, 20? He's like 19, 20, grown man, crying, crying with a beard and everything, crying. You know, so I call my doctor, I'm yelling, I'm like, look what's going on, this, this, this. Shouts out to my doctor, Dr. V, best doctor in the world, in my opinion. She said, Dave, if they don't do nothing in the next five minutes, you call me back. I said, no problem. Then I, 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 I held my brother's hand. I said, don't worry, I got you. I'm fighting for you, man. Don't worry. You're going to get your things. I promise you, not even 30 seconds, the nurse comes in with the IV pole and the meds apologizing oh no we're sorry he didn't know that that took him access to his iv and then gave him his meds gave him an actual bed so he could lay down and he actually got his care Hmm. so that hurt me you know why that hurt me because i'm like wow that's my cousin that's just because i know i know him imagine all the other people going into that same er in in the same world but that we don't know of that are by themselves. They're just getting kicked out, kicked out. And they're just left there suffering. And some of them are actually even dying because they're in a crisis, no help, death. 
And that happened to a close friend, family friend that we know. He was in a crisis, did not get the medical attention, and he passed away. He passed away, a very close family friend that we know in Canada because of sickle cell anemia. Mm. In a crisis, did not get the medical attention because they thought he was faking it. They thought he was just a fiend or I don't know what. And then they left him here there to die. Now he passed away. Now they're trying to say, oh, I'm sorry, all that type of stuff. But you can't bring that, that man back. And look at the damage now you caused to the family. Look at the damage that you just did to everyone. And I blame the system for that. That's when I realized how important it is to speak up mm. you know, and be in there for the voiceless. So that's how I see myself. It's like Durkio said, the voice, you know, are the hopeless, are the people going through it, man. That's why I'm, I'm like this, you know. But the reason why I got a smile in my face is because I know that it's going to be all right, you know. Mm -hmm. I actually believe that we're going to be able to change if we keep fighting and all that and helping each other to know how to handle all of that, you know, and fight for ourselves. I know we're going to be all right. Mm -hmm. 80% is mental, man. 80%. Like, and I had those days where I'm going through a crisis and I hate my life and I'm going through it. But I just got to remember, man, it's only for a short period of time. And there's going to be a time also where I'm going to get out of the hospital. I'm going to be back with my family. So back to what I was saying, you got to hack your brain. You got to hack yourself, you know? And that's how you actually get through the tough moment. By, it's weird to say, but by enjoying it. Because you can enjoy it. Because there is a lot of good doctors and good people too. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Then, um... I mean, this has been one of the best interviews I've ever had. The, the, the yeah, amount of, I, I, in, in, first of all, I barely had to say a fucking word. You did all the talking, which is good for me. I was like, <laughs> great. I get to sit back and enjoy a bunch of free inspiration. And, yeah. uh, get, you know, it was great. Like, this is my type of thing. I loved it. Um, yeah. And everything you said today inspired me. Um, and every, I mean, if you're listening to this right now, yeah. You're definitely inspired. Uh, where can people find you? Where can people find you to keep up with you um, and just kind of learn more about you? Uh, so where they can find me is uh, my IG, Young Dave Banging. So Y-O-U-N-G, D-A-V-E-B-A-N-G-I-N. So it's that on Twitter, Snapchat, yep. Facebook, um, Instagram, YouTube. TikTok, and right? YouTube. Yeah. TikTok too, yeah. TikTok too, Young Dave Banging on right. everything. And you can even go on my website, youngdavebanging.com. And then that's when you can, you can find the merch and all that type of stuff. Oh, perfect. Or, uh, also on, a, what's it called? Nevergonnastop.com. So N-E-V-E-R-G-O-N-S-T-O-P.com. That's basically where you're going to find our drip and all that type of stuff. So, uh we're working on the website right now, but you can go on it to see everything we're doing in the community and stuff. But really soon, you know, we're going to, we're going to drop in. You're, we're going to be able to see, you're going to be able to purchase, like you, to buy like all the merch and all that type of stuff that we're working on, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, and for other people too, like I will, when I put this podcast out, I'll post, <clears throat> I'll post the video that I had posted. I'll post it on my story again. Um, cause I posted a video for those of you listening to this, I posted a video of Dave on my Instagram account, the one where you were making the B in the, in the, in the hospital, but I'll post it again. Um, and thank you for saying the name of your website because I wanted to buy that hoodie. So I appreciate you saying that. Uh, and man, just thank you for your time today, man. I like, it was just incredible to have you yeah. on, to share your story, share your perspective and just kind of give me and my fans and everyone listening a sense of you know, hope that you can continue to be the best version of yourself and that you can make your dreams come true and that it's all in your mind. And um, so I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate you. I just wanted to, to all the listeners, to all the viewers that are watching across the world, our model, what we live by is NGS. Never gonna stop. No matter what. Never stop. Keep your eyes focused on the goal. 
everything, there's some negative stuff that's gonna come, there's some positive stuff that's gonna come. But remember, stay focused and no matter what, no matter who it is, it could be your mom's hating, it could be your girlfriend, it could be your boyfriend, it could be your closest person that you love, you know, just understand that they don't understand you yet and they don't understand your vision yeah. because when God created you, he gave you your vision. You know, so they're not going to understand your vision, only you do. So keep working on it, keep going. Rather you want to be a doctor, um, a lawyer, even if you want to be a garbage man, create your own branding, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to be, just keep going. And me, I'm on the side, I'm clapping for you. Shout out to all my hustlers, you know, hustling. I appreciate and I love you guys all. And I can't wait because all the docu on the documentary, um, re real soon on, on my uh, YouTube page, I will show you guys my process. And I do have videos of showing you guys of how I'm actually grinding in the hospital. Yeah. And I'm going all the way up until like 3 a.m. And I look like this. My eyes are red, puffy. You'll see all the medications that I'm on, but how I keep fighting through it. You will see it visually. So stay tuned. I'm so pumped to see that. Yeah. I'm so excited to see that. <laughs> Mr. Dave, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Um, thank you. Guys, if you got any value out of the episode, subscribe to the pod, share this with a friend because there's no way you listened to this and did not get any value or inspiration. <laughs> so don't just hold on to it for yourself. Share, share this value with somebody else. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, Dave, we're going to tap in pretty soon, man. Appreciate you and um, sure. thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You don't even know how much I appreciate you putting me on this huge platform, you know, it, it means a lot. And just know, I'll never forget you. I'll remember you forever, man. Thank man, you. Same here, bro. All right, man. Well, thank you so much, bro. Have a good rest of the day and keep doing thank your thing. You. All right. Thank you.